All right, hey guys, in this video, we are going to cover the hand and wrist palpation. The first joint that we will assess is the radial ulnar joint. And in the radial ulnar joint, what I want you to do is grab a contact on the radius and grab a contact on the ulna. And we're just going to provide an A to P and P to A shear here. So what I'll do is I'll take the ulna and I'll hold it stationary, grab the radius here, and palpate A to P, P to A, and then I'll flip flop and reverse that over here on the ulna, A to P and P to A. The uh, last palp for this radial ulnar joint is a compression test. So it is here and I'm going to squeeze. And what I'm doing is when squeezing, I'm going to push that radius and ulna together. Uh, there should be a nice spring between the two of them there. If I do reproduce pain here, this is also an orthopedic test called the bracelet test. So uh, if I do reproduce pain here, this can be something that I can utilize when trying to make a diagnosis of arthritis in the wrist. Uh, the next palpation is the intercarpal joints. So the two rows of the carpals that lie in the wrist itself. It's important for us to remember that we have these osseous landmarks of the styloid process of the radius and the ulna and that with those landmarks, we have this kind of a bowl that is that is shaped at the radius and ulna. They kind of sit in this little bowl, and then all of the carpal joints fit within that bowl. So the palpations that we will do here initially is a long axis distraction. So for a long axis distraction, you will shake your patient's hand, grab their distal radius and ulna, and then you will distract and then relax. As you distract, visually you'll be able to see that you are distracting those joints, but as you relax your grip and it rebounds, you should be able to feel those joints coming back. Next is a medial to lateral and lateral to medial palpation. So if we put uh, your patient in anatomical position here, if we do a medial to lateral, I'm going to take the hand and move it medial to lateral. So medial to lateral here. Lateral to medial then is a glide in the other direction. So I'm moving the hand back and forth, lateral to medial, medial to lateral. We will do an, uh, an ulnar tilt. So an ulnar deviation and a radial deviation. There should be a little bit less radial deviation than there is ulnar deviation. And then we'll do an A to P and a P to A shear. When we do this A to P and P to A shear, We'll have our patients stack their hand like this. Now remember that there is this interaction between the distal radius and ulna, that proximal row of carpals, and then the intercarpal joint, the true intercarpal joint between those two rows of carpals. And then there is the distal uh, row of carpals and then our metacarpals, okay? So when we go through it with our palpation, I'm gonna start by isolating and holding down on the distal radius and ulna. I'm going to shear A to P and P to A. I'll move down, you saw my hand move down and onto that proximal row of carpals. We'll shear again, A to P, P to A, and then again moving down on that distal row of carpals and shearing uh, last time, A to P and P to A. The next palpation we'll do is uh, an individual carpal palpation. So we'll do an A to P and P to A palpation of all of the different carpals. We'll start with the scaphoid. If my patient gives me a thumbs up and I pull down, so she'll hold here, hold, and then we have this little bit of an anatomical snuff box that is formed here. Relax. That is scaphoid at the base of that anatomical uh, snuff box. Its articulation is with that radius, so you'll be butting up right up against the radius. Just medial to that is lunate. So we'll find our Palpation here, A to P, P to A on the lunate. Next is the triquetrium, but sitting on top of the triquetrium is the piezoform, so you will uh, palpate both of those at the same time, A to P and P to A. As we move a little bit more distally, we'll find the hook of hamate and palpate the hamate, A to P, P to A. Moving more uh, midline on the hand, uh, we will find the capitate. Capitate is palpated A to P and P to A here. 
Next, we will move on to the trapezoid. So trapezoid is easiest if I come over here, palpate down, trapezoid. And then last is the trapezium. Trapezium articulates with the thumb, so um and thumb. If we bring that um, metacarpal down until its articulation here at the very base of that metacarpal is trapezium. Okay. Next is metacarpals. So for the metacarpals, we just produced a metacarpal shear. I'm just going to do it on one set here. So uh, either side of those metacarpals and then simply shearing back and forth. And then finally, we have the metacarpal phalangeal joint and interphalangeal joints. So when we do this, it's very, uh, uh, we will want to distract here with that uh, phalange on that metacarpal interaction. We'll produce a long axis distraction in doing that and then move A to P, P to A. We'll do some circumduction and then lateral to medial and medial to lateral. This was the palpation of the hand and wrist complex.